Hey everyone, how are you doing? You have Mike here, and today we're looking at the Perfect Prime CO2 390 Indoor Air Quality Monitor. Um, so we are going to be using this here in a test that we have coming up. Uh, we're going to be testing out different sources of CO2 for your indoor growing. Um, not everybody can afford a uh, CO2 tank like this with a uh, set of regulators and solenoid and then looking even further you need controllers and, and so forth to run all this tank um, and it gets really expensive fast so people are looking for other solutions and there are some on the market what we're going to do with this meter here is uh, we are going to uh, be testing those uh, sources of CO2 so um, <clears throat> this thing here was really cool it came with a 16 gigabyte uh, card for the data logger which is inside we'll talk more about that in a little bit um, and it also came with a 18650 uh, lithium on rechargeable battery. Those are the kind that you see in your vaporizers. Um, and uh, it came with that included also with the USB and uh, the wall outlet for it too. So pretty awesome. We can put this in a tent and uh, just forget about it. Don't have to worry about it. It will charge. And even if we lose power, um, this is still going to be working because it's got a lithium on rechargeable battery, in, which is pretty cool. Um, so for features wise, it's accurate up to 50 parts per million and it goes from zero to 5,000 parts per million, which is going to be totally acceptable for our test because um, we're probably not going to be going much higher than what we see in this room right now. We're going to talk a little bit more about this number here in a, in a couple moments, so uh, just bear with me. So this specific meter here uses a what they call dual infrared sensor called an NDIR, non-dispersive infrared uh, unit um, or sorry the unit inside that they use specifically for the co2 uh, you want to look this up it's an NDIR feel free to go and take a peek at it um, it's kind of fascinating if you're into that sort of thing but uh, a little bit technical for the average person if you're like I said if you're into that sort of thing go check it out if not you don't have to um, but it is cool technology so once again it does have the data logger um, so you could keep track of all of your information and uh, I think for a week it used 200 uh, kilobytes so Not that much using it. You could probably get a full year on one 16 gigabyte SD card I, I, I haven't fully tested that but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll By the end of the year we'll know <laughs> um, So another cool thing with this is it, it can actually be charged by a, a portable battery backup because it's got a USB charger, right? So you can even use this with a backup power unit. So let's talk about CO2 for uh, a couple minutes because after getting this unit, I, I really started to dig in the CO2 and kind of realized that I didn't really know that much about it, <laughs> even though I've been using this in my fish tanks for uh, for quite a long time, uh, just growing some amazing planted tanks uh, because the plants love the CO2. It really helps with photosynthesis. And uh, like I said, we'll get into more of that in, in, in a totally different video. Um, but one thing that I did find out interesting is, uh, well, did you know that the Earth is actually, or Earth's atmosphere is made up about 0.04% CO2? Um, that turns out to about 400 parts per million, which is kind of crazy. But uh, that number is constantly going up every year with, uh, well, I'm not even going to mention it, but let's just say so one thing I did find extremely fascinating was that every time we exhale, we're exhaling up to 40,000 parts per million. 40,000 parts per million. So that means that any room that we go into, including this one right now that the door is closed, and I'm going to say that when I started filming this video on my first take, we were at about 800 parts per million, and now we are at 1,200 parts per million. <laughs> So they say if you go in and talk to your plants, you're actually helping them. Well, as you can clearly see, we are helping our plants by being in this room. All my fish tanks right now, lights are on uh, with gases exchange and, and air water circulation. It's pulling the CO2 from the air into my tanks and it's helping. And if I had plants in my room right now, in, in this room as well, my, in my grower space, um, we would for sure be using that CO2 in our plants, right? So that's that's pretty awesome. So when I first turned on this meter, I was I was really alarmed because uh, I was sick for a couple days and uh, we were just in the house. We didn't leave and uh, our CO2 concentrations were up to about 1,500 parts per million, 
which is which is pretty high. Uh, so we definitely kind of started looking into this, and then we found out that that's actually normal <laughs> in a house uh, or in a building, especially that doesn't have proper ventilation in it. Older homes, stuff like that, uh, you're pr you're probably going to see higher concentrations of uh, of CO two um, in your house. So. Don't be totally alarmed if you if you see that in the summertime. It's definitely going to be a lot lower when you got windows open and, and stuff like that. Um, and if you have an air exchange system, that would probably be a really good way to, uh, to also help get some fresher air into your house. Uh, I know a lot of building codes now, uh, especially for buildings, sort of like what I live in, um, they do have uh, air exchangers and stuff like that in order to make sure that the, uh, the CO2 levels inside your house are, are um, at proper levels. So there was a study back in uh, 2012, they were looking for loss of cognitive uh, abilities with uh, exposure to CO2 gas. So they found that basically under a thousand, pretty much everybody's safe. Uh, you're not gonna really notice anything. Uh, it's just a low enough concentration, it's not really going to, to do anything to you. But when you start to get over uh, you know, 11, 12, 13, 1400 parts per million, um, that they actually notice cognitive ability loss uh, of up to 12%, which is, that's, that's something. Um, and to take that even further, when you look at up to 2,500 parts per million, or 2,400 parts per million, sorry, um, that they were seeing a loss of up to 51% compared to uh, test results that were done at 600 parts per million. So that's, that's something, you know what I mean? So uh, let's try to find out when CO2 is not really going to be safe for you to be around anymore and you're really going to start to notice some problems so at 10,000 parts per million um you're gonna you're gonna start to notice an increased respiratory rate and then not till you get up to about 50,000 parts per million uh dizziness confusion that would set in and up to a hundred thousand parts per million that's when you're going to start noticing visual disturbances tremors vomiting hypertension loss of consciousness um, and then all the way up to 250,000 parts per million is death. So 250,000 parts per million and 1,100 parts per million, um, they're so far apart. Being in that concentration, like I said, this, may, this meter won't even tell you if you're going to die. It's just going to say hi because it only reads up to 5,000 parts per million. Okay, so I just wanted to go on and show the, the, this, the quick difference between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide because I, I had talked about this on Facebook and I, I think a lot of people were really confused. I'd probably say maybe about 30% of the people were, were totally confused between the two. Um, so I just want to state the difference because carbon monoxide is, is a totally different beast. Um, so I just want to go over the concentrations uh, just so you see the difference, okay? So at 50 parts per million, most adults should be all right in those concentrations. Um, you shouldn't really notice too many things uh, going on. So 200 parts per million, you would notice slight headache, fatigue, dizziness, nausea. Um, then at 400 parts per million, you would start to notice frontal head uh, headaches um, within one or two hours and then it would be actually life threatening if you were to stay in there long term after about three hours. Um, 800 parts per million, dizziness, nausea, convulsions uh, within about 45 minutes, um, unconsciousness within two hours, um, death within two or three. 1600 parts per million, you'd be uh, headaches, nausea uh, within 20 minutes and death within an hour. Uh, so basically, you know, like carbon monoxide is a whole different beast. Um, that's the one that's really going to kill you. So the reason why I'm talking about carbon monoxide, once again, um, even though this machine doesn't read carbon monoxide, is just to uh, distinguish between the two so there's no confusion. So what I would like to do here is I would like to uh, take a look at this a little bit closer um, and show you how to uh, set the alarms and uh, kind of show you how to do some little minor adjustments in it. All right, guys, so I just want to give you a quick overview um, of this unit. So let's just start by covering what it actually shows. Now, it has an alarm that you can set a uh, high and a low, which I think is a really cool feature. Um, I can also change it easily by just pressing the up arrow to um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, and then we also have uh, the couple different modes. So you can have it so it circulates through all modes. Um, so that would be 
humidity and uh, temperature or your CO2. Um, there's also uh, a smiley face, a frown phase, and a really, you should get out of their phase uh, for your CO2 readings, which I think is pretty cool. It kind of switches through. Um, so as you can tell, just from me being in here and breathing closer to this machine, it, the numbers are going up. Once again, 40,000 parts per million, uh, 40,000 parts per million um, in our breath as we breathe out, right? So um, keep that in mind. And once again, like I said, the uh, it really knows the humidity of my hand. And I'm gonna put it here again, and you can see it just jumps up immediately. Uh, so interesting to know that this, various, this is a very sensitive unit. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of show you how to do some basic stuff. So we're gonna hold the down button. And this is gonna allow us to set up our date and time. You push the enter button in order to go over to the next thing you're looking to program and then the time of the day so forth so now we're going to hit the uh, mode button we're going to hold it and it's going to bring us to a new menu so this here is going to be the alarm uh, parts per million this is the alarm low so a thousand parts per minute, a million, that's going to be a low alarm. We're going to put it lower than that because I don't want it to beep all the time, even though we can't turn it off. Let's put it to, uh, actually, let's put it up to 1100. 1100 seems to be a good number here. And the alarm high, 1600 parts per million. So it's asking me to set my altitude. Uh, so I believe I'm at... 500 or uh, 495 uh, feet above sea level so I believe that's where I should be putting it and now it's going to ask me for the log for the SD card now we have the SD card the 16 gigabyte card that came with the unit um, it's asking me um, in this situation it's asking me the data logging interval so it goes in 2 5 10 15 30 seconds then we're gonna go one minute two minutes five minutes 10 minutes 15 30 and then an hour so we want intervals every minute I think that's a good way to go about it And this is the display cycle cycle interval. So we're going to put this to <clears throat> so we're going to put this to 15 seconds. So this here is a, an alarm reset, which we are not going to try to reset my alarm. Uh, so we're going to put this just back to this. So there you go. The settings are saved. Um, so the only last thing that you can do here is by holding up. You can do some calibrations of your CO2 sensor. Now, I'm not going to do this because from my uh, research, these NDIR sensors are pretty good uh, stock settings. I don't want to touch too much other than what I've already done. Uh, so I don't want to go really and mess around with this. So I'm going to show you, this is the calibration for low. And the calibration for high, which once again, I'm not going to touch. I'm going to leave it to the stock settings. And then it's asking calibration for temperature and for humidity. Once again, not touching that at all. Um, and would you like to reset your calibration settings? So just in case I have done something, I'm going to push this here and you're going to hear a couple beeps. Okay. Uh, I saw so a mistake. When I've done that. So I hit the enter button down at the bottom. All the settings have been saved. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna put this back over to CO2, remove my hand from it. You're gonna see the humidity is gonna go back down. Um, and, and there you go. That's the settings that you can use with the uh, with this machine. So once again, this here is a, is a pretty awesome machine. This is gonna come in really handy for our experiments. Um, and 
yeah, you could really tell the difference too. Um, with the door open from when the door was closed and we were filming, it was really getting high in here uh, with the CO2 concentrations. But with the door open, uh, the concentrations are really dropping down quite a bit. So what I want to do to give you just a little quick demonstration is I'm just going to give one one breath of air, one exhale near this reader, and I want you to see how high it jumps just from one breath of air. And notice the smiley faces are no longer smiling and the uh, readings are just going up extremely high. That was just from one breath. So this will now take about two or three minutes to come back down to normal levels because um, it only is able to adjust so much at a time. But it almost maxed out the, the reader just from one breath and I wasn't even I was like a foot away from it. So just something interesting for you guys. How much do you do we actually breathe out? All right, guys. So I would like to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate those that do watch to give us a, a like, a thumbs up, um, and leave us a comment down below. Um, if you have any ideas for future tests or anything you'd like to see uh, on the channel, please let us know. Be happy to uh, answer questions down below, and uh, we'll try our best to do what uh, you guys are asking. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, you guys have yourself a great day.